Hi, I'm Glenn Haddon from Roof Systems. You may remember a while ago we did a myth busted uh, video on the 79 series V8 Cruiser. It was a 2014 model and uh, we went through from uh, standard to chip only, uh, exhaust only and chip and exhaust. And we towed a caravan up and over the Gateway Bridge and did time trials. So I'm going to do this again. We're going to call this Myth Busted 2. What the difference is, one, we're going to flash shoot it instead of chipping it and show the difference there. Plus, this has what they call a DPF, which is a diesel particulate filter. Every common rail turbo diesel coming into the country now is pretty much going to have what we call the DPF, the diesel particulate filter. We've got an exhaust upgrade for these. We'll do a flash tune. We'll do the same testing up and over the Gateway Bridge, as in, in standard format, with a trailer on the back. We will do uh, the flash tune only, then we'll do the exhaust only, and then we'll match tune the two together, the flash tune and the exhaust, and show you what differences can be made safely to the new DPF model 70 series. Okay, we're going to do our, our dyno ramp uh, in standard mode. So this is the, the factory tune that's in there and the factory exhaust system. We'll measure what the air fuel ratios and the power are doing. Uh, we'll start the ramp at 40 kilometres an hour. We'll get up to 40 in, in fourth gear, straight through gear. Let's uh, see what she does. standard rear wheel horsepower. Now if you remember back to the original Myth Busted that we did, that's around the same sort of figures uh, that we had without a DPF. So uh, air fuel ratios coming in and around the 18, 19 to 1. So that's a great starting point. Toyota have done a great job of their um, of flowing their, their DPF. So what we're going to do now, we're going to hook on the trailer, about 2.3 tonne with the dyno in it, go up and over the gateway bridge. I'll we'll start at the bottom, fourth gear. Uh, foot flat to the floor as soon as we start heading up, hit the timer and we'll be starting that at 60 kilometres an hour and see how long it takes us to get to 80 kilometres an hour. We'll be measuring exhaust temperatures, uh, boost, we know what our air fuel ratios are now and uh, obviously that big thing is, is how does it accelerate, how long does it take to get from 60 to 80. Let's get into it. This is the trailer we're doing all our testing with, she's about 2.3 tonne on the uh, when we weighed it last time, it carries our, our mobile dyno all around Australia. So there's a lot of weight in there. Okay, we're on the gateway arterial. Uh, standard format, so that's the factory tune. The standard exhaust with the DPF. And 2.3 tonne of trailer on the back. Okay, here we are, sitting on 100 kilometres an hour. Fifth gear. Exhaust temps. Settling down to... Yeah, 450 degrees. At 8 pound boost. That's cruising there. Just under... Yeah, between, let's say, four, 420 degrees, sitting on 100 kilometres an hour fifth gear. Okay, standard format, what we're going to do, we're going to hit the gateway bridge at the bottom, fourth gear, 60 kilometres an hour. As soon as we start heading up, I'll hit the stopwatch, foot flat to the floor in fourth gear and see how, um, how long it takes to accelerate from 60 to 80. We're going to go to 80 because that's the speed limit there, so um, that's where we're at. Right, let's get into this. Here we go, and starting. degrees, exhaust temps, 62, starting to climb, changing lanes, we do have a truck there, 450 on the exhaust temps, 70 kilometres an hour, so the climbing, will she make it to 80, so 450, 80 and 80 
90 kilometers an hour, 51 seconds, 480 degrees exhaust temps. We'll head back to the workshop now. Uh, we will load a, the tune into it with the standard exhaust system. Run it up on the dyno, measure the differences there, put the trailer back on, come out and do another run up the Gateway Bridge. Here we go, 40 kilometres an hour. Prescription glasses, 179.1, so from 148 to 179.1. Rear wheel horsepower, uh, air fuel ratios were actually a little bit leaner, 20 to 1. Uh, mid range, uh, richening up to um, a maximum of 18 to 1. So, remapping, way to go, wasn't it? Alright, okay, let's uh, put the trailer back on, go for another run over the, uh, the Gateway Bridge. Let's do a time trial. We're on the Gateway Arterial heading towards the Gateway Bridge with the uh, modified brew systems uh, file in the ECU. Uh, still the standard standard exhaust system. Picked up some great horsepower. Leaner fuel mixtures. Uh, interesting. We did the test on at 100 kilometres an hour. What the exhaust temps were standard. We are sitting on 100 kilometres an hour. We with the remap in there. 350 degrees. 100 kilometers an hour, fifth gear. All right, next thing is the Gateway Bridge, 60 kilometers an hour, fourth gear. Accelerating to 80. Slowing down a little bit more, 60, and start. That's pulling, pulling hard. 300 degrees, exhaust temps, foot flat to the floor, fourth gear, uh, 370. 80 kilometers an hour, 18 seconds. We, um, well, it's quite easy. We just smashed a lot of time off. 51 seconds uh, standard, 18 seconds with the remap only. That's unbelievable. That is so safe. And the acceleration, that torque in fourth gear is amazing. Just the remap alone has made a huge difference to this, the towing capabilities of this, this 76. And I must say, I'm very impressed with the factory DPF so far. The flow, the exhaust temperatures, yeah, pretty cool. Right, right, back to the shop. Um, we will pull the, the uh, modified tune out of it, back to standard, uh, put the high flow DPF back exhaust system in three inch uh, 409 steel and do the same trip just with the DPF back exhaust system on. See if uh, the DPF back system makes any changes. Cool, all right, let's go and do it. Standard tune, standard factory tune and the DPF back exhaust system. Three inch DPF back. Once again, we'll start the ramp at 40. Yeah, the fuel mixture slightly so there you go that that tells us that the um there's not a huge amount of leaning out um, but it was running fairly fairly good uh standard as we said earlier but we are uh, we're definitely running leaner fuel mixtures with that uh, dpf back exhaust so that's going to equate to lower exhaust temperatures and i can't wait to do, uh we'll, what we'll do we'll we'll now head back out to the gateway 60 to 80 time it again see what the uh exhaust temps do and we'll give that a crack and then we'll come back we'll uh, put the remap back into it and run it as uh, the remap and dpf back exhaust and 
trial it on the dyno, then do our run again. See what we got. Righto, on the way to the Gateway Bridge, fifth gear, cruising 100 kilometres an hour, 350 degrees, with the exhaust system installed. Go up a little bit, 60, and we are heading up now. Definitely sounds better than standard. Bit of a V8 rumble, not loud. Feels like it's going better. Exhaust temps 370, 380, 400 now. Foot to the floor, fourth gear. 70 kilometers an hour, 400 degrees in exhaust temps. 420. So about 72 kilometers an hour. So 420. 450 exhaust temps and we are at 80. 41 seconds, 450 degrees on the exhaust temps. 10, 10, 10 seconds quicker with the exhaust over standard. Be very interesting to see where we end up with, uh, with the tune put back into it with the uh, cat back exhaust. 480 degrees standard, 450 with the cat back exhaust. So that's allowing the gas to get out of the DPF a lot quicker. Cool, okay, back to the shop. Load the remap, new tune back into it, back on the dyno. Let's get the results on the dyno, uh, see what the horsepower does, and the air fuel ratios. Trailer back on, back to do the time trial. Righto, the tune's been Loaded in, we have the DPF back high flow exhaust system fitted. So now it's the testing time. Does our remap and exhaust together give us the benefit? Okay. 40 kilometers an hour. Okay, so we've got 198.1 rear wheel horsepower, air fuel ratios, mid-range, say from 55 through to 90 kilometers an hour, running uh, much leaner at uh, 21 to 1, where the factory tune was about 18 to 1. So, uh, there's the proof in the pudding. Um, does an exhaust system, DPF back exhaust system work? Yes it does. And look, the remap and the, the exhaust system together gave us from standard 148 up to 198. And that's a touring tune, so that's really safe. All right, let's go and uh, put the trailer on, go for another run. On the way to the Gateway Bridge, with the uh, roof systems remap installed and the exhaust system fitted. And yes, I can feel the difference, big time. So. Anyway, we've done this other test, 100 kilometers an hour, fifth gear, cruising. Um, there we are right now, 100 kilometers an hour, actually. Put the cruise control on. 350 degrees there. The boost sort of boosting a little bit more, but the exhaust temperatures did not change. It's 100 kilometers an hour, 2.3 tonne behind us. 350 degrees on the exhaust temps. All right, we're at 60. We're just waiting for it to get to the same mark, heading up the hill and go. Three hundred degrees exhaust temps, seventy kilometers an hour, three twenty exhaust temps, and eighty. Seventeen seconds. Uh, but running 350 degrees on the exhaust temps from 60 kilometers an hour to 80 kilometers an hour. So, there you go. There's a few, uh, few really good results out of that. One is the myth about that the DPFs are not a good thing. Well, I think we've just proven that uh, with the, the factory DPF on, the, on this 76 series, which will be the same as the 79s, 
it um, flows as good as uh, a system without the DPF. If we cast your mind back to uh, the last last MythBuster we did with my 79 series when it was standard uh, with with no DPF, that didn't come out with one. Uh, the air fuel ratios were pretty much smack bang on as what this was, and this had more power. So the fuel ratios are, are the same. We put a DPF back exhaust system off on just to let the exhaust gases get out of the DPF quicker, which is uh, removing the heat from the DPF. It works, it's proven. We've just proven it. And the remap, well, what can I say there? It's, it's so much more refined than, uh, than a chip. You know, we can, obviously we can play with boost settings, we can play with torque settings, we can uh, torque limiters, we can change fuelings all the way through the whole rev range. And we've proven there that, um, obviously, that the, like for instance, the V8 Cruiser, um, in the ECU, the maximum boost that they say is safe is 22 PSI, we didn't hit that. Uh, we're running about 18 PSI, so we're well within the factory safety limits. So this is a safe tune. We're getting great power increases, great torque increases, running leaner fuel ratios, which is better for the engine, which in turn gives us lower exhaust temperatures, which exhaust temperature is the biggest killer of the diesel engine. Myth busted. The exhaust system back works, flash tuning, unbelievable. Uh, yeah, look, Toyota have done a good job, but uh, we've, uh, we've made it even better. So, look, DPS, when they first came out, I think uh, around 2009, we started seeing them in Australia. Uh, every vehicle, every turbo diesel vehicle coming into the country now is going to have a DPF. They're emissions laws. You can't remove them legally. Massive fines if you remove your DPF. Um, so we want to take care of the environment. We want to do things legally. We don't want to avoid any insurances. So we have to work around them and we've got a solution for it. And we've just proven it works. So bang, myth busted.